This video is brought to you by ShortPixel. For the first time ever in this video, I'm going to show you all the plugins that I install on every single website. It does not matter whether it's an AdSense site, an affiliate site, a client site, or a business brochure site, all of these plugins are going to be on there if me or my team are building it. I'm also going to tell you why you need these plugins and the category of plugins. So if you don't want to use those specific ones, you can find a replacement. There's lots of similar plugins available for WordPress. All these plugins also have a free forever plan, so you can try them out. And for some of them, the free forever plan is so good, you don't need to upgrade if you don't want to. And I mentioned just now that this video is sponsored by ShortPixel. ShortPixel just happens to be one of the plugins that I install on every single website and use every single day. It's one of the most powerful image optimization plugins that I've found. I just install it, set the settings, and it's ready to rock and roll. ShortPixel just does its work in the background. I never have to worry about it. It just does what it needs to do. ShortPixel is packed with features, including intelligent image compression, automatic WebP and AVIF conversion, bulk optimization, and seamless integration with WordPress media libraries and page builders. It dramatically improves website speed without sacrificing image quality. The free forever plan with ShortPixel allows you to optimize 100 images every month. If you do not use all 100 optimizations, they do not roll over to next month. Instead, your quota resets to 100 next month. But the good news is, Every image you upload only needs to be optimized once, so 100 optimizations can go a long way. And as an added bonus, if you sign up for ShortPixel through the link down below in the description, you'll receive a bonus of 50%, which means on the free plan, which is normally 100 image optimizations a month, use the link down below and you get 150 image optimizations every single month. And the link down below is also an affiliate link, so if you end up upgrading to a paid plan in the future, I will get a commission for that. It does not make it more expensive for you, but it's an easy way to show support for me and this channel if you want to. And if you do upgrade in the future, that 50% bonus applies to every single tier. So if you get the 30,000 one-time credits package, you will actually get 45,000 one-time credits, but you have to use the link down below. And some people will tell you, you don't need image optimization plugins because you can optimize your images online before you upload them. And I'd say that's half true. You can definitely optimize images before you upload them, but if you want the most reduction of file size, you want to use an image optimization plugin like ShortPixel as well. And here's an example. I took this JPEG image and converted it to a JPEG online. I just uploaded it to the imageresizer.com image converter, picked a few settings. I made sure to not choose compression of any kind, and I clicked convert. And you'll notice immediately when we compare the two images that the JPEG file is way smaller, even without compression. This isn't always the case, but it is here. The PNG version is 1.7 megabytes, and the JPEG version is only 324 kilobytes, or 0.324 megabytes. Quite a bit smaller. Now let's use the image compressor on that same website. I'm going to upload the PNG and the JPEG and compress them both to compare the stats just for fun. When comparing the original and compressed JPEG visually, they look pretty similar. Let's download the compressed image. Doing the same thing for the PNG, you'll see that the compressed version loses some clarity, especially around the light source in the distance. Now comparing the file sizes on our hard drive, the PNG was reduced from 1.7 megabytes to 310 kilobytes, with noticeable loss in quality. The JPEG file was reduced from 324 kilobytes to only 76 kilobytes, and 76 is awesome and perfect for your website load times. So people who say you don't need image compression plugins are half right. Because 76 is great, but we can do even better using ShortPixel. When we compare the compressed JPEG to the compressed PNG, we can clearly see the JPEG is the winner both in visual quality and in file size. Now let's upload these files to our WordPress site to see what ShortPixel can do. Image compression automatically starts shortly after the images are uploaded. And when we look at the compressed image sizes, we see that the original PNG was 1.7 megabytes and now is 403 kilobytes. The original JPEG was 324 kilobytes and is now 85 kilobytes. The PNG we compressed online and compressed again with ShortPixel is now down to 277 kilobytes. And the JPEG we compressed online and then compressed again with ShortPixel is now down to 63 kilobytes. So in this case, converting the PNG to a JPEG, then compressing the JPEG online and compressing it again with ShortPixel led to the best results. I'm sure you can see how powerful this is if you have lots of images on your website. And if you want to see a full walkthrough of the best settings for ShortPixel, check out the video in the card up above 
in the description down below. And of course you need an SEO plugin like Yoast SEO or Rank Math or All-in-One SEO or Simple SEO I think is one as well. There's so many out there to choose from, but what you really need when you're getting started is a guideline, something to help you with your SEO. And Yoast SEO is the plugin I started with when I started doing AdSense websites and, and it's only gotten better over the years. And the other ones I listed are just as good. So try them all out, pick your favorite one. What I like about a lot of these plugins is they have a checklist that you can walk through for each post that you create. And now with AI, of course, they have even more ability to help you manage your SEO and improve your SEO. But that checklist that you see at the bottom of every single post that you create is super helpful because you can just walk through that checklist and make the edits that are needed to hit those SEO metrics. And then your, your blog post is gonna rank better. As you get better with SEO, you're not gonna need Yoast SEO anymore or any other SEO plugins because you're just gonna know how SEO works and what you have to do. But when you're starting out, these plugins are super helpful. So I encourage you to check out one of these guys and install it on your website. And I put it on all my client sites who request SEO services because it gives them a better understanding of how SEO works and that's always a good thing. The next up is the Min Site Enhancements plugin. It's fairly new. It only has 100,000 installs. I think it came out in 2024 and it's powerful because it replaces a whole bunch of other smaller plugins. Here's a quick rundown of some of the options it'll do for you. And I have a complete walkthrough of all the settings for the free version, which I'll link to in the card up above and the description down below. But using this allows you to really dial in the efficiency of your admin area while minimizing your plugin usage. So it's definitely one to check out. For example, page and post duplication. You can just duplicate a page or a post with one button, hide the admin bar options, front end and admin CSS options, redirect after login, log out, login, log out menus that change whether you're logged in or logged out. All these things used to be their own plugins. You can also do these things with your own code snippets if you want to, but having it all wrapped into ASE makes it really easy. So check out that tutorial that I mentioned, that walkthrough, and you'll see everything you can do with the free stuff in this plugin. Next up is SiteKit by Google. I know Google is kind of the dark side, especially when it comes to tracking online and privacy laws and stuff like that, like GDPR, but I still use Google tools. And the SiteKit plugin for WordPress makes it so easy to connect to these Google tools that you see right here. Search Console, Analytics, PageSpeed Insights, and AdSense. Each of those is relevant to every single website that I manage and probably every single website that you manage. Google Ads is relevant to some websites. I don't install this on very many. In fact, only one of my portfolio where I run Google Ads to landing pages and track conversions and things through Google Ads. But mostly it's these four right here. It's just so quick and easy and it gives you all the data in the dashboard. So you have your search console metrics in your WordPress dashboard. Analytics data, the most important data in your dashboard. PageSpeed Insights in your dashboard and your AdSense income and settings inside of your WordPress dashboard for each of your WordPress sites. So as far as managing clients, this makes it easy for them because it has all the information all in one spot. Of course, you have to update your privacy policy to say you are using all these tools and there's gonna be cookies that are involved and GDPR compliance and all that stuff. But if you don't like Google tools, and you wanna have analytics in your dashboard, there are some free options available. Search Console, there's really no other option besides Google. Google Search Console gives you information about your site in Google Search Engine. Nobody else is gonna give you the information that you're getting from there and link it to your WordPress dashboard. Same with your AdSense. You can have other ad, ad platforms like Mediavine, Ezoic, but they're also not gonna be showing data inside your WordPress dashboard. And you don't have to have this data on your dashboard either if you don't want it to. You can select which ones of these you wanna integrate, either one or all of them or two of them or whatever you want. I find it super handy to have on most, if not all my websites. Then I install main WP. This is a plugin that is used to manage your WordPress sites. So I have main WP installed on a main website on a secret URL that nobody knows about. You can even set it up locally on your computer. And then that's the main WP dashboard. And through that dashboard, you can then manage all of your websites. And you can see at a glance how many plugins need updates, how many themes need updates. You can update them with one click. You can do backups. You can do uptime monitoring. You can manage all the websites under your management really easily with main WP. 
I have a lifetime for main WP. I wonder if they still have that. I bet they do. So main WP Pro lifetime for 600. I've had this for at least seven years. So it's so far or at this point, less than $100 a year I've been paying. And you can also get these same features with a SaaS software as a service where you're paying monthly and you're going to pay way more than you're paying for main WP. And you get the same stuff or equivalent stuff. Anyway, main WP is awesome. If you go to the explore add-ons page, you can see all the stuff it can connect to and what it can do. There are a lot. And it connects to third-party plugins as well. I use the WP Vivid add-on. Probably down near the bottom. Or here's third-party ones. AAM extension, SMTP extension, Security Ninja, SEO Press, Termageddon, WP Activity Log, WP Compress, WP Vivid, the very last one. SEO Yoast extension, WP Rocket, and all the, these extensions help you feed data into your main, main WP dashboard. And in there, you can then see all this data about all your websites. Makes it super easy to manage everything. Plus you can white label it. So if you're doing client work, you can have all your client sites in there and it can be white labeled to your brand. So you, when you install the main WP child plugin on a website, it'll say your company name. Or you can even have that plugin totally hidden. So your client can't even see it and maybe accidentally delete it. So you can hide it completely from the plugin list inside the WordPress dashboard. Anyhow, main WP is definitely worth checking out. I install it on every website. Makes it super easy to manage. I use WP Vivid, which I mentioned to go for backups and migrations. If my hosting account does not provide backups or my client's hosting account does not provide backups, that's when I use WP Vivid. And it just gives you peace of mind. I really only use it for the backups. I schedule the backups. I have them go to offsite storage. Let's see if it shows us. There's the main WP extension. Let's see if it shows us the list of offsite storage we can use. There's me right there. Right on their plugin listing page. Oh, there it is. Uh, Dropbox, Google Drive, Microsoft OneDrive, Amazon S3, DigitalOcean, Spaces, SFTP, and FTP. I use Google Drive for mine. So every time a backup's made, it goes into my Google Drive and the backup's just stored there. And even if your hosting account does have backups, like I use SiteGround for most of my websites and they have automatic backups for 30 days, but what if SiteGround crashes or loses your backup or backup's corrupted or whatever? You have another option by having WP Vivid installed and doing all these backups to cloud storage. And I've got a full walkthrough of WP Vivid as well. I'll link to that in the card up above. I forgot to mention, I also have a full walkthrough of main WP, so I'll link to that as well. Solid Security is another plugin I use very, very often, pretty much every website, just because security is smart to take care of. You need to have security. I don't have a walkthrough for this one yet, but there's a bunch of tutorials that you can check out. I'll probably make one in the near future. Once you are familiar with it and you're good at using it, you can do this, and it's true. You can secure websites in under 10 minutes because you just have your list of settings that you go through and it makes your website more secure because WordPress out of the box is not super secure. It can be better. And so having plugins like this really help. Akismet I use on all websites because I don't like spam. It blocks lots of spam messages for me, both comment spam and email spam. And it is free to use, maybe. Because you can say I'm using this for personal use and then it's free. But if you're using for business use, they want you to pay a few bucks. It's not very expensive if you do go for that option. But it gets rid of a lot of spam. doesn't get rid of all of it, but it gets rid of a lot of it. And I, it just keeps your day more efficient, not having to weed through all the spam. I have a tutorial for connecting a Kismet to Contact Form 7. I'll link to that in the card up above and the description down below. It works pretty much the same way for other plugins, other Contact Form plugins. So check out that video if you want to see how a Kismet works. And lastly, this is kind of a bonus. It's not a plugin per se, but it's Cloudflare. It's a SaaS software as a service, but you can use the free account. I use the free account on pretty much all of my websites and it just runs traffic through their servers and they filter out the bad traffic for you. It's essentially how it works. There's a bunch of other stuff too, but that's the bare bones. They filter out the bad traffic. And if you combine that with Solid Security, who then locks down the WordPress site itself, and all the traffic you get is already filtered, your security is pretty solid if you have those two things working together. And Cloudflare, I mean, the, the pro plan, I've never had the pro plan. It gets super expensive. 
if I can even get there. There's so many options. It's a it's a big old company. I guess 20 bucks a month isn't that bad. But you don't really need it. I'm going to go on a limb here. You don't really need the $20 a month plan. The free plan plus a solid security plugin plus don't share your passwords with strangers can get you a long way as far as security goes. So I, I think the free plan is just fine. If you want to upgrade to the pro or the business or the enterprise for more peace of mind, and if you have like a, a big time e-commerce client or you have a big time e-commerce site yourself, you might want to look into more high security options that you pay for. If you want to check out walkthroughs for most of the plugins I mentioned today, I'll have them linked in the description down below so you can check out those tutorials and I'll link to these pages that I reviewed here as well. Next up, check out this video right here, which is about how to get your WordPress site up and running in 30 minutes or less. And if you got value from this video, make sure you click like and hit subscribe to let me know and I will see you in the next one.